Okay, this is a cocoon, and this is getting ready to show a live birth coming out of the cocoon. In a cocoon, there'll be up to six in one cocoon. This is peak moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm in beautiful sunshine on Vashon Island in Washington, and I'm at a place called The Worm Farm with, well, Mr. Worm, no, with Mark Yelkin. Well, Thanks I, for joining me. Well, glad you're here. I am known as the worm guy. Are you really the <laughs> yeah. worm guy? I yeah. like it. So how did you get into doing worms? Well, after 25 years in the oil and gas business and being moved around the country and my kids going to different high schools mm -hmm. and uh, finally decided that uh, it was time to settle down and, uh, and give back. And so we decided to get in something that really was meaningful to the environment and give back until we had given back as much as we had received from the last 25 years in the oil business. Giving back, that's a very interesting notion. I see it here on your shirt. It says, Earth Matters, Giving Back, and it has the planet on it. Yeah, well, if you think about Earth Matters, that has a lot of different connotations. Earth Matters, Earth Matter, and yes. uh, then Giving Back is kind of the whole principle to our what we're doing here at the worm farm. So, shall we take a look and see what you're doing on the worm farm? Yeah, come on in. Thanks. So, I want to know, why are worms important? Well, worms are very important. As a matter of fact, even Charles Darwin considered them the intestines of the earth. The intestines of the earth. I love it. And uh, what they do is whatever they eat, they, which is uh, decaying matter, okay. they change that physically and chemically, and uh, their castings become great organic fertilizer okay. for the earth. Okay, so castings are earth poop, or earthworm poop. That's right. Right. Okay, so their poop becomes fertilizer. Yes. It, it retains moisture real, real well, has some uh, nitrogen, but also the key thing that uh, worm castings are so good for is it has a lot of microbial and bacterial things that happen in the earth. They also aerate the earth as they're digging these little tunnels. But, uh, you know, we've, we've leached the soil so much. I was talking to a nutritionist the other day, and they said that in 1984, um, spinach had 75 milligrams of iron, and today it's like five milligrams. So we've taken all the minerals out, partly by the synthetic fertilizers. And the artificial yeah. fertilizers actually not only uh, do harm to the soil, they also hurt the worms. So the worms are either having to go somewhere else or go deeper. Uh -huh. And in, uh -huh. after a while, so much artificial fertilizers will just uh, kill them. So. so part of your job with growing the worms is getting us back to healthy soil, because from healthy soil we get healthy food. That's right. So what are we... Let's, let's see how that starts. I'm, okay. What's this well, everything, bin? everything we, we're doing in here, we're trying to create a, a perfect world, perfect <laughs> environment for the worms. Okay. So everything's ideal. Um, a worm can live up to seven years if it has a perfect environment. The, the key things with a worm are oxygen and moisture. My biggest challenge is moisture, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But that's why when it rains a whole lot, you see all the worms coming up. Right because they got too much moisture, they're trying to keep that balance oh, with the oxygen uh -huh. and moisture. Okay. So what we do, we start with our, uh, our compost or humus or best decayed material we can uh, to start with for the bedding. Okay, so that's what, this is a, this this just, is a bin for the bedding. This is just pre-bedding mix, yes, okay. which I bring in. And so then we use a, because the moisture is so critical at different times of the year, uh, this time of year I have to use a lot more moisture because they, it dries out so quickly. Right. So I use a cement mixer to put the bedding in. I also mix uh, some supplements in there like uh, a grain mix that I had made up and actually a little calf, calf milk replacer. And I mix all that up and it turns into this very what fine. What have you got here? You so can you see mix it, it up in here in the cement mixer? Yes. So it's really But I nice. pour water in there to get it to the right, the right moisture. The right moist Okay, yeah. and then does it go into here? And no, the, it ah. actually stays here, and then I grow the, uh, the worms in buckets, which is totally different than most systems. Traditionally, worms are grown in beds. But in buckets, um, each one of these buckets has a different age, or each one of the pallets in buckets has different age worms in it. Ah. So each one of these buckets is, is harvested every two weeks. 
And so I separate the worms, the cocoons, which is, which I'll show you in a minute, and uh, the castings, and separate those. Then I take the worms, and on top of some of this bedding, put them back, water them, put them back on a new pallet, uh -huh. and they're there and for the more, two weeks. Round. Yes. Okay. And so I started with 12,000 worms. Probably now I have close to half a million. So, so let's go to that next step. What do you okay. do? What do you do with So the to parts? separate the worms, the cocoons, and the castings, I use this machine over here. Let's go take a look. Okay. So here we are at this is a wild contraption. What do you do here? Well, this is really the key to the whole process on this part of the uh, farm because it separates the worms and the cocoons and the castings. And a cocoon is basically a little uh, puffed out tomato seed looking thing. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and they reproduce, like I said, they're on a two week cycle. Now, so, so the worms. So, what happens with the cocoon? Okay. I'm, go back to this. What okay. happens with the cocoon? Well, there's two different stages of cocoons. When they're first hatched or laid, which I'll talk about in a second, they're yellow. And then when they turn this brown color, then I can tell that they're ripe and I can actually um, get them to have oh, a live birth. Oh, that's amazing. A little guy coming out. Okay. So, this machine, theoretically, the worms will, and anything that didn't get composted will go down to tub number one. The cocoons fall to this second level and anything that didn't get composted. And then the castings, which is the worm poop. Worm poop. You know, what's amazing, I gotta tell people, you can't smell this, but the point is it smells clean. It's really a, it's really a very nice, earthy, it's, sweet fragrance. Yeah. It's not, it's not ugh, at no, all. It's, it's odorless. It's very nice. And one of the good things about it is an organic fertilizer, it won't burn at any concentration. I've actually grown things in 100% worm castings, although that's maybe a waste. It still uh, proves how, what a miracle it is that what worms do. So, so show us how this, this little So we're at the end of our two weeks for a bucket. Right. So we take a bucket. We're going to harvest this bucket. So we dump it out here. As you can see, there's worms in there. Wait, 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 let's see. Oh, yeah, it's wet. Yeah. Hi, little guy. And there's cocoons see? and there's castings. Here's a little guy there. There's approximately, once they get to, these are about three months old ones it looks like, but once they get to full grown, we like to have 250 in each bucket. There's a bunch of them in here. Yeah. There's probably more here. than that in this one if you would really take time to, to look. Okay. So the separation process takes place by this violently shaking, <laughs> and it has different screens, and you will see the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Right, I see. So that so that these guys, the worms are coming down this end, as right. you said, and the little cocoon, the smaller pieces are yeah, here. Yeah, which I call a hatch mix because it's not just 100% cocoons, but uh, there's little baby worms in here too. Yeah, yeah and if yeah. they little bitty worms get on this level, because I do put the cocoons in a, especially during the winter, into an incubator, so the worms that get in on that level just get a free two-week vacation <laughs> to Hawaii. <laughs> okay. Well, let's take a look at where you go from here with these parts, okay? Okay. So what do we have here? Well, from in there, I move the castings out here, and this is my bulk area where I keep the castings. So as you can see, they're... The little round, little dry, little round pellet kind of right. things. And the thing about castings, it's still alive. I mean, it seems dry now, really? but once that's used in fertilizer or in your gardens, it still causes a lot of microbial and bacterial things yeah. to happen and, and helps the soil. It's kind of an activator. I, I think that's one of the best enabler or activator okay. are good words to talk about when you talk about castings. So then out here from the bulk area, we can put it in our, our bags, our packaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so people can get it. At your local soil builder, non-toxic earthworm castings, organic. A little does a lot, which is really, is that... it's really true. So, you can uh, just put a little. You can either mix it in with the soil, or you can just do it topographically, and then as you water the nutrients and the action, 
uh, kind of gets down into the root system. If you look at a, if you took two uh, tomato plants, one with and one without, at the end of the year, your, your uh, width would have a much more fibrous root system uh -huh. because of that. Uh -huh. Because the nutrients um, naturally are not, um, they're too big for roots to readily absorb them. Oh. So this helps break down that action and, and so the roots can absorb them better. More, more material. Yeah. And what's this? I, 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 I'm not sure that I'm ready to, to take on having a cup of this myself. It's called Vashon Worm Tea. Yes. <laughs> really? Well, I, I call it, uh, it's a liquid fertilizer, and, uh, and I joke about it that it's Red Bull for plants, but this is, uh, it's concentrated, and uh, so this would make about five gallons. I mean, you could pour it on straight, and it would work fine, but uh, it has... So is this made from the worm castings? Worm castings. I actually add a few things like kelp, and then it's aerated, and, and so it's, uh, it helps uh, get that microbial stuff going, too, a lot quicker. But if, especially if you have a sick plant, castings and kelp are very good things to help sick plants. You so. healthy worm stuff here. You bet. Well, you've got another project going. Let's go take a look at the other project that you're doing with healthy things. Okay. So your other project, part of it is sitting here in the back of your truck. What have we got here? Well, after I realized how much good worms could do in producing castings and the good for the soil, I also realized they had a lot of other benefits for our environment and our community. And so my vision was to get rid of the, uh, all the green waste on Vashon Island. That's not a small vision there, no, all the and, green waste. Yeah, and uh, it is a lot larger task than I thought just to get rid of the food waste. <laughs> but because of county regulations, we had to start with just the pre-consumer food ah, scraps. Okay. And uh, so that's what I'm doing with all the restaurants and grocery stores on Vashon. And then I've uh, started a new program for residents to bring me their buckets for the ones that don't do the worm bins. And so on Saturdays, they bring me a bucket. And then they get uh, free compost in return. That's a really nice exchange. Based on their participation. <laughs> so I do all the work. And, uh, and then this ends up being our finished product. This is food scraps from Vashon right here. My goodness. I mean, we started with this, the, 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 the tomato slices and the onion slices. And you've got nice, with nice. With the help of... Nice. Uh, a couple, lot of worms between here and there. A couple hundred yeah. thousand worms, yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. And once again, this smells so fragrant. It's so with really this, lovely. as it, uh, and I'm committed to uh, uh, returning this to the community only in bulk for, for use mm -hmm. in their, their gardens and uh, in their yards. And uh, the benefit of this is sometimes better than just the straight castings because this has castings, cocoons, worms, and of course the compost. So you're bringing the worms back into the community. I mean, right. you're really doing a whole cycle here. I mean, yeah. your giving back notion is starting with the, the, the compostables from your community and bringing back good earth to them. Yeah, and my, my little saying that I have with that is, uh, let's eat it here, keep it here, and use it here. And so that whole full eat cycle. Eat it here, keep it here, use it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of our, our waste, our landfills close, and a lot of everything is being hauled off the island. Yeah. And so the more that, and we are an island, so we're the best example of anybody, any community, if we can prove that we can do it, then uh, we can be a model for other communities. That's, that's true, because as an, as an island, you've, you've got a chance to be your own ecosystem and, and your own, you know where your limits of sustainability are, right. because you've, you're on it. And, and it's, it's more expensive, of course, to bring things in. Right, energy. and haul things off. But the, and our biggest uh -huh. challenge uh -huh. now is, of course, uh, educating people we are, as a society, even in this part of the country, we're very spoiled. When we go to the water faucet, we turn on the faucet and water comes out. And, you know, when we take our trash to the corner, it gets hauled off somewhere. So we have to start thinking differently, and uh, being sustainable is, is the way to go. Well, I think what you are talking about is people making tangible connections. Because if you turn on the faucet, you don't know where that water came from. If you've dug your own well, you know where that right. water is coming from. And I think that, that your start in doing this with people's food all the way through to the earth that can grow the food again is a really beautiful model for and, all of us. And then they have something to take home and improve their, their soil or their That's gardens. Great. So, Let's see how you get this from here to there. How do we do that? Okay. Well, every day, what I, what I decided was um, if it was going to work, I had to make it easy for not only restaurants and grocery stores, but for the residents. So I, I purchased a whole lot of five gallon buckets okay. and they all have lids. And so I supply these to the restaurants 
And so um, they fill them up. Then every morning I go around, I pick them up. If they're full, I replace it with an empty one okay. and do that every day. The grocery stores, um, they usually set their stuff out in boxes mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Here's a better example, you know, of things that uh, yeah, they, they, they the cut asparagus away. and, right. and uh, it's, it's amazing what gets thrown away and how much gets thrown away. I know. I, I, we have a cooperative market and it's like there are things that are thrown away just because it's slightly discolored or a little blemish. It's perfectly edible. You take a little piece out of it and it's fine. It's like yeah. so much waste. I can certainly see how people dumpster dive because there's still a lot of good stuff <laughs> left in there. And I've been tempted a time or two. <laughs> bet. <laughs> well, shall we go? Uh, show me how. Okay. I'll take a bucket. All right. And I'll take a bucket. Okay. So we take it into here where we have a couple hundred thousand worms to help us out. I'm so glad. I don't think I'd try and do that by myself. Okay. Here's our hmm. worm bin, industrial strength wise. Oh, and in one. here is about 100,000 worms, wow. as you can see, that they're working away. Yeah, look at these little, wow, look at you guys. Woo! Are you having fun much? Now, this system is an organic flow through system. And what it does is it works down. So everything's put in on top. And we're going to put some, some food scraps in here in a minute. And then it's layered and then it comes out the bottom. There's a grate on the bottom and then there's a winch on each end that pulls another grate that slides across the top and agitates it enough that it'll drop down to the bottom and then I scoop it out and uh, put it in a, a bulk pile well, let, let me, back in the barn. Let's go back to the top. So you layer it. So, so we put, you put food scraps on put, it. We put food scraps okay. in, which we could do. All right. And this will and then we spread them relatively evenly out okay. to about, uh, you know, three inches or four inches. And, and this will be covered throughout the whole system. The system's approximately 16 feet long by 14. It's big. How 14. deep is it? How deep? Well, it starts Two, falling maybe, right maybe here. A couple feet? Yeah. Feet. But it really compresses. And as, uh, as happened before, a cable has broken and I had, had to do a kind of a sight hole to get down to reattach it. And it's just amazing how quickly the uh, food gets uh, broken down, broken really? down and compre really? yeah, and then it starts compressing. It's still in here, maybe three, four, five weeks uh, so before you, it falls out. Question: Do you add? So, what do you layer? Other, the worms have to get in here. I mean, do you put another layer then of some no. of the worms? No, the worms, they just are already in here because just... they they know the food's going to be coming on top. So most of them uh -huh. will stay at the top because they know that's where the food is. So they'll be in the top eight inches. I see. Now, when we harvest, we do lose, especially at first, you lose some worms, but I don't think that's a bad deal. As you saw in the compost finished product out there, if I can give that back to the community sure. for their gardens, it's not hurting anything. It's really helping. So, um, uh, but for the most part, the majority of the worms are gonna stay at the top and then at the same time, they're reproducing all the time. And so they'll just keep reproducing as long as they have space to reproduce in. So we, we would layer this whole area with, with food. Okay. And then we, you need some sort of, uh, carbon or fiber mix for it to be, uh, to absorb a lot of this moisture. You know, lettuce mm -hmm. is going to be 80% moisture. So the problem you can get to, especially during the winter, is it's going to get too wet. Right now, this is on the margin of being a little bit too dry, but the worms still seem to be relatively Pretty happy. happy. Yeah. yeah. But they're going to get a whole new dose as this breaks down of moisture. So that's my biggest challenge always, is controlling the moisture level of any parts of my system. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so, you're in a wet part of the country, where yeah. somebody down in Southern California is going to be working to get the, keep it wet enough all the time, I right. would imagine. But that can be, I mean, we, from time to time, we water this if it gets a little too dry uh -huh. and just uh, watch it very closely. It becomes kind of an art that you kind of have to know what the worms, you know, you become a little intimate with the worms and what they like. And <laughs> Because if it gets too dry, what they'll do is they'll start excreting the moisture. They're 80% water too, so they'll excrete the moisture out of the body uh, to try to make a more moist environment for themselves, and they will literally dry up trying to do uh -huh. that. So not good. No, that's no, why no, that's so keep critical. Those little guys wet. So what we like to use, what we use the most, is is horse manure. Now the key to horse manure, or any manure like that, is it has to get up to 140 to 150 degrees 
to kill all the germs and the seeds and pathogens and everything else before we can even put it in here. So, and we let it cool off to below 100. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So this is very well composted in itself by the time it gets into our system. So have you got sources here on the island for, what do I call it, organic horse manure? Yes. So, so you've got, it's clean all the way from one end to the other. Yes. Fabulous. So. That's fabulous. So let's see what you do when you shake this, shake, shake it up, baby. Okay. What happens so down here? This is all going to be moving down. There's two things to watch for. As this, this grate moves on top of the other grate, uh, the finished product will start dropping to the floor. And then you will see this top part kind of look like an ocean wave as oh. it's, it's moving through and, and because it'll move through the whole system. So let's okay. take a look. Okay. And you'll see let's, it falling down through there. Let's go. Yeah, I see it's starting to be a little bit of a, you know, parts of it going down. As you've got stuff coming out. And yeah, there are worms in there. Which I think is a good thing. Because this, this finished product is still not done completely composting. Like we talked about, the casting is still being alive, so is this compost. And so the worms being in there are going to continue to break up anything that hasn't been broken up before. So what do you do then with this comp? What, what happens to this piece? This, does this, go, this goes back to people who have given you God. Either to the residents or uh, that have brought me uh, their food scraps based on their participation, if it's time to give them some, right, right. or else we, uh, we sell it back to the community and mm -hmm. pick up loads, and I deliver for free on the island to encourage that. What a deal. What so a deal. then what we have to do, though, the, to Next continue step. the labor-intensive part of this is to scoop it out by hand. And, and what do you do with the thing? You put well, the buckets in or? Throw it back in the middle of there so it's, <laughs> easy, so it's easy to load. I see. So you make a big pile of it in here. And what's hard is then, just to show you the labor intensive part of this, I spend a lot of time scooping it out like this so that I can get to it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So none of being a worm farmer is relatively or necessarily easy, but I think it's the. Uh, at the end, it's all, all the things that we do are very worthwhile. That's for sure. That's for sure. You're bringing life back to your, to your soil and to your community. Right. Full circle. Which reminds me that the last project we want to see is a way to have people do it so you're not the only one doing the labor, right, right in making the, the compost from the, from the scrap. So let's go take a look. Okay. So what do we have here? This is called a worm wigwam. A worm wigwam? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. And our idea here is to, uh, is to kind of take this out. We have, think about it, we're getting all the food scraps from the restaurants, grocery stores, and now to get more people involved, we're going to take it to the neighborhoods and let neighborhoods use this for their own kitchen scraps and use the compost in their own in their, in their own yards. yards. Right. Okay, so you don't have to do the transport. You cut out the transport right. part of it. Terrific. There'll still be some education involved, and I'll probably oversee it a little bit. But uh, you know, you want it to work. You want people to yes, you want to succeed. Be happy about it. So, what we've done is there's a group called Sustainable Vashon, and they've they've given us a green seed grant to purchase this and to take it to our first neighborhood. It's very similar to the. Uh, big unit we just looked at. And so, as we take off the top, uh -huh. it's the same thing. Right. right. And, and you've have, got your food scraps. And we have our worms. And your worms that go in here. Yeah. Okay. So we would do the same thing. We would take our yeah, food there's scraps. some worms in here. You can see a whole bunch right yeah. in Yeah. Oh, look at you guys. Wow. So it, it is a flow through system too. So it's going to flow down through. Layering on top and, uh, and coming down through to the bottom. Okay. And the bottom, once we want to harvest this, the compost comes out here. And you can see that it's very rich mm -hmm. and there's worms in it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, 
this is the finished project from the nice big kitchen. fat juicy worms here yeah and the way this one's harvested is a little different but there is a two grates and they have friction between them and it's very easy to do the harvesting by just turning this crank oh yeah a little piece is coming down just like the other it's a little slower process but uh, it works just as well and it looks like it's not as labor intensive it looks like the kids can do it yeah and uh, so our idea is to have, uh, again, we'll use the bucket system with the, with the neighbors. They'll come up and we'll keep track so that we're not over, overflowing it uh -huh. at a time. So there'll probably be a rotation basis between the neighbors. We keep, we're gonna have uh, composted manure, as you can see, as our layering. To add to the layering. next layer up here. Right. right. And then we'll teach them about the moisture content and how much water to put on there. And then uh, we'll just, uh, probably uh, have another space off to the side where we can take the compost out and uh, put it there for the neighbors to use. And then there'll have to be a uh, system in, in place to make sure that the people that are participating get their fair share yeah. of the compost, yeah. of course. You gotta have a compost monitor kinda to make sure that everybody gets it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So we'd like to have five of these in neighborhoods by the end of the year. Um, that's our goal and we're getting ready to, to place our first two. Well, that is exciting. We have talked about doing something like neighborhood composting in our area. I had no idea that such a thing even existed. So this is wonderful to get to see, you know, a small scale. I mean, that's the right scale. Walkable distances or bring your wheelbarrow distances, right? And, you know, there's so many things happening in the world that you need to get to know your neighbors. And so it's uh, just getting a community together to do one thing could be a, a good excuse for everybody to get to know each other better. That's wonderful. Well, I want to thank you. This has been a, a wonderful tour, and I feel more friendly with worms than I did before because you've really shown us how valuable they are. You're doing really wonderful work, not only for your community, seeding, putting all the energy into this for everyone, but for all of our communities to learn from you. Thank you. And I hope they will. I do have one other thing I'd like to give you. Since you've been to, this is probably your first worm farm. It, it's true. It's my first worm farm. I'm probably the admit. first worm guy you've ever met. <laughs> it's true. The first worm guy. Well, I have this gift for you. Ah, I know the worm guy. I do. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> That's great. This is Janea Donaldson, and I do know the worm guy. We had a great tour today on Peak Moment, Community Responses for a Changing Energy Future. Join us next time. <laughs>